Darwin was more of an adaptionist than an evolutionist in the sense that he proved adaptation, but he did not prove evolution. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Josh. This is Save Skeptic, and I've got another great video for you today. This one again from Charlie Kirk. And today he's discussing something, one of my favorite subjects, evolution versus creation. But before we get started, I will point out that the kid that's asking the question, who this kid is clearly not a Christian, I believe is far closer to the truth than most of his liberal peers. And we're going to see why. But let's take a look and then I'll jump back into it later. Uh, my name is Jaden. Um... And the topic I want to raise is about like evolution versus creation. Yep. Um, so it's not as political, but it certainly has political implications. Uh, and for reference, I was raised Catholic um, and it never really resonated with me. It always felt a little overbearing and I could never find like truth in, in uh, a Catholic or a Christian worldview. Um, and I started just like reading books and listening to podcasts that talk a lot about evolution and natural selection and those principles uh, and I find that's a, be a much better lens to look at the world like for instance you talk about like a meritocracy all that is is uh, natural selection like the cream rises to the top sure. I mean it, it's apparent in so many fields like look around at all these beautiful buildings this co that comes from architecture like the good ideas stick the bad ideas fall out of the gene pool um, and I, I want to know why like your thoughts on yeah. Natural selection so that and, and why it doesn't apply to humans. Yeah, this is, not, this is not a topic I know the best, but I have strong opinions on, so you have to understand I'm not as literate as I should be. But I'm a strict creationist, but that's fine. But there's there's spectrums on creationism and evolution. So do you, do you acknowledge that maybe God created the evolution as a shepherded evolution throughout time? Because that, that's a nuanced opinion. I acknowledge that there's a distinct beginning to the universe. Okay, right. um, every, like Albert Einstein, for instance, against his original view believe for sure that so there if there's a, a beginning is there a beginner that's the question and what who is that beginner no, but why do, is but it christ it has to be right uh just yeah. by because yes. the law is a lot okay great so then there is that beginner is god or the idea of god right and so then we as creationists believe the universe has a beginning end point right a, a beginning point and an end point yep we believe it's god i could walk you through why i believe that in the shortest period of time but as far as creation um, evolution hinges on far more faith than creation. To believe that the way that we are currently composed and having species change is an act of faith. Now, Darwin was more of an adaptionist than an evolutionist in the sense that he proved adaptation, but he did not prove evolution. He theorized evolution. He could be right. No, nope. I don't think he is. But he, he through his finches, he wrote that, yes, animals or birds will adjust to the environment of which they are in. We do not have any evidence, nor can you. You can guess in the fossil record of actual species change. Does that make sense? Yep. There's a lot of, like, uh, psychological things, too, in humans. Like, one example I'll bring up is, I mean, would you say, as a general rule of thumb, uh, like, women are the sexual gatekeepers and men are the sexual pursuers? Yeah. This, sure. like, that distinction can be explained by evolution, right? Uh, a female's eggs in her body is a finite resource, whereas a man's sperm is basically infinite, meaning the woman has to protect. There's more of a cost yeah. when she has to raise a baby. But maybe, whereas, God, God, maybe, God, maybe God, God made it that way, right? Maybe. But a lot of things like that uh, point towards evolution of some sort. For sure. But I think, you would, I, I think you're close because you're marveling in the design. Yep. And, and then therefore I think we evolution, believe it, it was designed. I think evolution can give off the impression of design because it is so intricate. Um, even like something like religion, I could, I would explain in terms of evolution and natural selection. Like over time, religions change. For instance, there's plenty of denominations well, sure, of Christianity. Of um, so, uh, like religion is not a. Uh, I, I don't want to spend too much time, time on this, but I think you would agree with our perspective that even looking at this objectively with reason, there's something improbable of our existence yeah right yeah totally. and that improbability could be a roll of the dice of chromosomal gene mutations over trillions of years or it actually could be something a lot simpler which is there's something above us that just designed us and so i actually think the designing argument is far more rational because you look at how we're built you look at the trillions of chromosomes within us how our body works the dna sequencing 
it's hard to believe all that is an act of the dice. And that is what evolution contests, is that it's a lot of, it would be like rolling snake eyes 23 billion times in a row. That's how, that's how improbable evolution is. Uh, my contention with that would be like, evolution is like, it's unchanging. It's not, it doesn't put us at the center of everything. Um, so a lot of, like a lot of people explain it's like the good of the species, but truly it's just the good of the gene, passing on the genes that stick. And, and, it can be subconscious. Of course, I, I, of course I don't disagree conscious. with any of that. We just think all of that was designed into us, okay. right? And, and so, so is your belief that God made the universe and then I, I believe so, implemented? So it I, I believe what the scriptures say, which is that God created the earth and then God created man, and that we are here. The sp the period of time I don't get into strong opinions is six thousand years, six million years. I don't really care that much. I think it's more important morally that God predated the universe. The universe was made at His direction, then nature was made, then animals were made, then man was made in that sequencing. And I think that's an important sequencing. Yeah. And I agree that there should be, if we believe that there's a start of the universe, there has yes. to be a beginner. For sure. Um, and I, I also like disagree with like ethical subjectivism where that's like, uh, you're entitled to your own moral, but I feel like there is one truth. There has to be. There has to be, right? And your argument is God provides us that truth through the Bible. But then why is your truth the truth? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So, because with, with, through both reason and revelation, though. Okay, really quickly, remember at the intro when I said that this kid is far closer to the truth than most people his age? Yeah, well, unlike his peers, he holds to a worldview that believes in objective truth. And that is a huge start because people who hold to these postmodern worldview ideas where truth is subjective, it is so hard to have a conversation with them especially when they've been infected with these parasitic ideas that you know truth is somehow subjective but because he holds to this objective truth standard he's so close okay and so what does that mean it means that eventually he's going to have to confront logical inconsistencies with his worldview for example if we're just products of chance and there's no god in the world and we're just a amalgamation of all the chemical processes in our brain, how can he ever come to the conclusion that there is truth in the world? Because evolution, as they say, doesn't prioritize truth. It prioritizes survival. Remember, it's survival of the fittest, not survival of the truest. Also, he accepts that there must be a beginner. A lot of people today will not even go that far. So he's very close, but he still has a long way to go. Let's take a look. So God gives us both revelation, of course, is the scriptures. Reason is our ability to interact with the natural world to see if the scriptures are actually true. So why is Christianity true? Well, first, let's just test the Ten Commandments. If you follow the Ten Commandments, your life will be objectively better and your society will be objectively better. Right. I mean, not killing, not murdering, not stealing, honoring your parents, not having anything above the idea of a sovereign God. Right. Resting for one day a week. Um, you know, not lying. These are things that we can all agree like, okay, that's a good way to build society. But let me just one thing, the whole, the, the two miracles that Christianity hinges upon is creation, which I think you're almost there ish, that there was a beginning to everything in the beginning, God created the heaven, and the earth, and then the resurrection. And the resurrection is the greatest, most documented miracle in human history. And we believe of course it to be true. Uh, it defies every other historical explanation that like, so in order for an atheist to be able to wrestle with the resurrection, you must answer who is Jesus Christ? Okay. What happened to his body? Why did all of his followers die a death voluntarily afterwards? Uh, why were all the original witnesses women, which in the old world, you never would have had women witnesses, right? A lot of misogyny back then. Um, why did we have all these people that from, for, from first, from the first threshold, the second threshold, uh, eyewitnesses say that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So all of this, you know, canon, and I don't expect you to believe it, I, is hinging on that one event. So it's not about Jonah the whale. It's not about part of the Red Sea. It's creation, resurrection. That's it. Yeah, and I, if those two things are true, everything else in the Bible can be true. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I agree that, uh, like as, from, for an atheist to try to disprove theism or, or at least Christianity, yeah. it would be almost impossible to say, why would people die to say, Jesus died on the cross for me and I saw it. Why would I admit, like, I'm, I'm from your perspective, like, why would I admit, yeah, yeah, I saw him die. 
and rise from the well, dead. Well, no, yeah, like, for example, and so again, the, the, the answer people would give is like the Jonestown cult, that people can do really crazy stuff if they're convinced by a certain leader. I don't, I'm not convinced by that argument. But for example, like James, the half-brother of Jesus, Paul, who had no reason whatsoever, formerly Saul, persecuted Jews, led a great life, converted to Christianity, died a terrible death, in prison um, from the upside down uh, resurrection of Thomas like these people had no reason to die the way they did yet they saw something that compelled them to all of a sudden put everything on the line which was the belief that Jesus rose from the dead now believe this what's crazy the Romans gave an opportunity saying you can believe in Jesus you just can't say he rose from the dead they said no I refuse to give an inch on that and so there's something there so powerful that it inspired an early church across an entire region and a religion that swept the world and so that's enough for me to believe that it's true. Yeah. Um, not, to, not to mention we have four different, actually to count Acts, five different eyewitness accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then Acts, of different perspectives of this one singular event. And then we have Josephus, and then we have the second and third rate um, historians that say that something happened in this region at that time. And, and then also, I don't expect you to be persuaded by this, but like, accepting Jesus in my life changed everything for me. It changes your perspective, changes your worldview, changes who you are from within, and it gives you purpose that nothing else can explain. So. I, I appreciate hearing yeah. your input Thank on you. it. Thanks Thank you so time. much. Yeah. Instead of looking at creation with awe and wonder and, and amazement that all of the design we see in the world is evident of a masterful creator, so many people want to give the glory to creation itself as if time, matter, and space are somehow gods themselves that are responsible for everything we see around us. Well, matter, space, and time are part of the creation just as I am, just as you are. And the Bible is very clear that people are going to worship the creation rather than the creator. And it's amazingly prophetic that that's what we're seeing today. For me, my view on this would probably be laughable to many, to probably to many of you, but I believe in a young earth. I have faith that the word of God points us to that reality. I don't think you can have evolution in a macro sense. I just can't believe that we came from apes and bananas that were all connected to some kind of primordial soup. As Charlie said, the roll of the dice is just too improbable. It's more likely that we are the product of a creator who embedded in us the ability to adapt and change to our environment. But this sense of evolution where everything came from an amoeba billions of years ago is at best a wild guess and at worst a lie from the pit of hell. But I love how Charlie simplifies the argument and brings this down to two miracles, the creation and the resurrection. If you can believe that this did not all come about by chance, then you believe there's an, a miracle happened. And if that's true, then we live in a supernatural world where a resurrection of the very God that created us is totally plausible. Not to mention that the resurrection of Jesus is backed up by such convincing evidence from the, the, numer the numerous testimonies of those who went to their death claiming it to be true. That's much different than those today who are deceived, you know, that are martyrs that go to their death because of some deception. These disciples went to their death because they saw something and they were not going to deny that up until their death. And you also have the fact that this event changed the course of human history and spawned the church and created Western world values where freedom could reign, where, where human dignity means something. And if the evidence shows that Jesus is reliable and actually rose from the dead, then we can be certain and know that the Bible is true because Jesus also put his stamp on the word of God. Amazing stuff. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, like, subscribe, tell me your thoughts. Again, what did I miss? What am I missing? You guys are smarter than me. I want to know. Take care and God bless. Thank you so much. Um.